So this is what's really useful. And let me give you, here I have a kind of an example here. Let's review a little bit. Uh, list all possible rational groups. Anybody remember how to do this? What must the roots be determined by in this problem? Yeah, the 40. And this is a one up here, so it's not going to change anything on the bottom, thank God. I'm not going to get any possible fractional roots. Because every single one, if I break this down into five little binomials, they all must have a 1x, a 1x, a 1x. So there's no way to get a fractional answer. If I had 2x plus 1, that could be x equal negative 1 half. But then I'd have to have a 2 there for that to be possible. So what are the possible rational roots then? Yeah, one, two, four, five. And I'll start just putting together with five times eight is 40, four times 10 is 40, two times 20 is 40, one times 40 is 40. And what has to go in front of all these? Plus or minus? Because, I mean, and just think about why this makes sense. What could go right there, and this will be the rest of the mess, what could be right there could be like x plus or minus 1, x plus or minus 2, any factors of this. It can't be x plus or minus 9, because then somehow there'd be a whole number there times 9 is 40. That's neat. Okay. This would only become fractions if what? if the number here was not 1. And negative 1 here is an interesting point. And negative 1 here really wouldn't change anything because they're already plus or minus. But it had to be some non-unit, not 2, 3, 4. Now what sucks about this, if you remember how to do this? So the, the, this problem would be find the zeros and factor this monster. What sucks about this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times 2 is 16 roots to possibly check out, right? So here comes the thing I think you'll all wake up a little bit for, is the upper lower bounds there. And here's how this thing works. And I'll talk a little bit about why it works. Do me a favor, divide, synthetically divide this using 8. Now, this instant, yes. <laughs> Some point in the future, just do it. Missing any terms? So let's see what we get. And I'm not promising it's pretty, right? So if you get something really ugly, you're fine. Ugly, I mean kind of big numbers, right? Bring one down, eight, nine, seventy-two, uh, something, forty-three. All right. Times eight is three. 44? Thank you. Minus 35. Times A is 2472. All right, now, now let me just stop right here for a second. You can see that if this was my guess, and all I was curious about was, does 
x minus eta factor, I could pretty much stop right there. I could have stopped earlier. Because so I'm like, this thing is going to grow, just grow crazy without containment, right? So all these are going to end up being positive. This will be 26, 14, is that right? Times 8 is some 16,000, whatever the hell, 17,000 number. 17,000, uh, 40. <laughs> All right. You guys with me? So the important thing here, now, now realize what this means. Let me, let me kind of go in a little bit into why this works. Notice how everything here is positive. So it sounds like the semi-lame Descartes rule of science, but it's not. It's, it's freaking awesome. Uh, what did we just show? We just showed that this is x minus 8, cool, times... Let me kind of get to the cut to you. x4 plus 9x cubed plus 43x squared plus 309x plus 2614 plus 17,000 something rather over x minus 8. Is that cool? Right, because that's what we got when you divided this by this. So therefore, this is this times this. That's all I'm saying here. Nothing major. Okay. Now, anything bigger than 8 will make this what? Positive. You with me? Eight makes it zero, but anything bigger than eight makes it positive. Anything bigger than eight will make this thing positive. Is there any way that anything bigger than eight could make this thing zero? Because what we're really curious about is what are the zeros of this? I know 8 is not a 0, but I'm going to go further now. I'm going to say nothing above 8 could possibly be a 0. And why is that cool? Because now I can eliminate positive 10, positive 20, positive 40, and I've already eliminated positive 8. I just cut my list down by 4 with only one synthetic division. So if you synthetically divide by something and the answer comes out all positive, that is an upper bound for the zeros. There are no zeros above 8. In fact, 8 itself is not. Yes, but on what base you pick 8? Just because. In fact, what I normally do when I have a list like this, I pick something kind of in the middle, a little bit further up. And, and you guys see my reasoning. I'm not going to pick 40. That would be kind of silly, because if it doesn't work, I don't get any more information. But if I pick 8 or 10, and they don't work, I could throw, but I get all positives, I can throw these higher nuns out. So me as a student, I would pick something like 8 or 10, depending on the day. I don't know. Right? <laughs> and just divide. And if I get all positive, I know I can throw out positive 10, positive. I, I know that that's an upper bound. So that we choose our, our upper top. Yeah, you choose a number kind of smart, because it might work, which would be kick ass. But if it doesn't work, I want it to tell me something useful, possibly, right? Now, I'm not guaranteed it's going to come out all positive, but if it does, I can kill these guys. So I'm not going to necessarily pick 20, unless 8 doesn't kill these guys. I might have to pick 20. You with, you with me? But I'm not going to pick it the first place, because if it doesn't work and it's an upper bound, I can only throw 40 out. Ooh. Yes, so you only have to find one that works. Well, I'm always looking for one. Of course, my, my prayer is that I get a zero here, because yeah. then it actually goes in. But what I'm saying here is, if I if I don't, or even if I do, if they're all positive, that still would be an upper bound for my zeros. Yes, sir. For the upper bound, we always pick the positive number, like positive 8, positive 10, positive 20, or we can... Well, the upper bound could be a negative number. Because you could have only negative answers, you would think. But I, I don't know, so I'm going to start with 8. Because I know, I know 10 is an upper bound. So if we pick 10, it would come out all positive. But that doesn't mean 8 is also not an upper bound, right? I don't know if you guys are kind of with me. What if the only positive number was 1? All the other roots are negative. So wouldn't 2 be an upper bound for the roots? Of course it would, because there's nothing above 2 that would work, right? All right, so to complete this package here, try negative 8. Well, let's do this together, just to cut to the chase. All right, so C 
see what we get here. I think it's a little less crazy, but it's still kind of crazy. Okay, negative 7, 56. Oh, uh, you can do it. 27. Uh, where am I at? Negative 8 times 27 is something. 216. Yeah? Negative? You guys still with me? Uh, negative 2, 4, 51. You can do it, Jeff. Uh, times 8, I don't know, 2008? 2008. 2008. And then that's 2150 times negative 8 is negative 16,000, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. So it's going to come out negative, blah, blah, blah. Are you with me? So the nice thing with Descartes' rule of science, it kind of prepares us for this in a, in a way to find an upper bound. If they all are positive, that's an upper bound. There are no answers that are above that number. Cool? To find a lower bound, if they alternate signs, then that number is a lower bound. And do they alternate signs? Yes. Yes, all the way through. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, big ass negative. Now there's a, I can't remember if I signed this homework problem, I don't think I did, but there is a homework problem that goes into the proof a little bit that kind of sets up a reasoning behind the proof. And I th I kind of set up a reason behind the proof here. And if you think about it, if I throw a negative number in, this would be to the fourth, right? To the third, so that would be positive, positive, positive. And they would all be positive. There's no way it could be zero then if it was anything less than that. It's kind of the same reasoning as it was over there. And you see why the signs have to alternate because every other sign changes sign when you throw a negative in. Very cool. So now, what would our list look like now? After these two things, we've just killed 8 and negative 8. That's totally gone. But we've also in the process killed plus and minus 10, 20, 40. This is the lowest it could possibly be, and it doesn't work. And that's the highest. It could be and that doesn't work. So I can throw out anything lower or higher than positive 8 or negative 8. So now my list is only this big. So I'm finally fulfilling my promise. I said this list can get big as all hell, but thank God we have something like this that can cut our list down pretty quickly. <coughs> okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. Okay. But we took the list once. Can I do it twice? Can I pick 4 and check for 2? Yeah, sure. I mean, I don't know. I didn't try it, to tell you honestly. Let's try four. Well, I kind of know what the answer is because I made this in a certain way, so it has answers. Um, yeah. So okay, we can try it. So we can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, P, is it a lower bound? It's a lower bound, yes. Wouldn't it be a lower bound for all the negatives? For all the negatives, yes. Thank you. Right? Yeah. It's, the, it's a lower bound, so obviously it's got to be just for the negatives, because there's only negatives that are lower than this. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For the roots? Huh? Yeah, so you have um, your, your possibilities kind of splayed out here. Negative 40, negative 20, negative 10, negative 8, negative 5, negative 1. I messed them play. 2, 1. And then it has 1, 2, 4, uh, 5, 8, Blah, 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 blah. So we just determined that 8 doesn't work, and it was an upper bound, so I can kill all those. Negative 8 doesn't work, and it was a lower bound, so I can kill all those. My question is, if we start with 10, for example, this problem starts with 10, do we have we get the same results? You'll, you actually, if you do 10, you will get all positive, so you can throw out 20 and 40. For, for, 20, yeah. for, for minus 10 also... <coughs> Yeah, I think minus 10 should give you the same idea. So I haven't tried it out yet. So there is possibility that this is not the upper, upper bound. So I want to, uh, let, me, let me say this. Would it be wrong, would it be false if I said an upper bound for, uh, let me see, an upper bound for, um, oh, what's a good example? I can't think of anything but money. <laughs> <laughs> An upper bound for the speed you go in your car is 8,000 miles an hour. Is that false? No. I mean, you're going to go a lot. 
less than that, okay, how fast your car is, you're not going to go 8,000 miles an hour. So it's not false to say it's an upper bound. If I said that guy is at most 18 feet tall, you'd say, well, duh. But it's possible that there is another one. Definitely. So just to say something's a bound doesn't mean that, I'm not even sure exactly what you're trying to say there. Just because something's a bound doesn't mean that the next number down has to work for something. It's still possible that five or negative. There could be a lower bound. Be, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. my question. Yeah. Like cool. thing, like there's a, the bound of the function is the limit mm -hmm. and spell how you use it to the bound. So bounds in math really just mean, in fact, we often talk about error bounds. And to cover our ass, we go out a little bit more than we might have to and say the upper bound is this and the lower bound is that, when really we could have been a little more conservative and brought them in. But it's not wrong to go a little further out. So it all depends on our first pick. We picked eight. It did show me that there's nothing above eight, nothing below negative eight, right, when we did those two. But we could have picked five, and maybe there's nothing above five and nothing below negative five. We could still see that possibly if we try five next. Maybe it's a bound. That thing like you said, when the 8,000 for the car is like, this is the upper, the best thing we can do, but it's mm -hmm. But it's not saying that. It's not saying that's the best. It just yeah, says but that is a bound for every possible speed. Yeah, but like, this is the max you can get. But it's depends how you drive your upper or lower value. True. But if that's my 8,000 miles an hour is here, we're of course down here. So my bound could be lower, but that still is a bound. Yeah, the limit is 8,000, but depending on how to use the function is you'll follow Okay. Maybe. I'm not sure. Yeah. I've got a list. Let's just say we do find one that just equals zero. Um, what would we circle as the answer? Oh. All right. Let's, let's, um, let's do this. So here's our new list. Bear with me for a second. I want to try to find a zero so I can remind everybody how this kind of works. So. The one beautiful thing is we do have a method now to at least try to knock some things out without having to do the whole synthetic division because that could take a long ass time. So we just kill, cut our list in half by doing two calculations. So somebody give me a number to try. Two. Or two. Okay, I heard two a couple times. Let's try two. One, one. Yes, yes, yes. That's the plan. So you got 1, 2, 3, 6, negative 23, negative 46. Oh, it's not seeming too good here. Negative 81. Uh, negative 81. Negative 161. 2. You can do it, Jeff. Oh, looks good. Negative 20. Negative 40. Just got to have some faith there, Jeff. So what the hell does that mean? First off, I think we're all conditioned maybe by now to like it when we get a zero there. Some of us might not know what the hell it means, but when we see a zero there, we're like, oh, something good. <laughs> but what does that really mean? This equals what? <laughs> X minus 2 times the other chunk. It was 5, so now it's 4. Well, that's where we are currently. You guys with me? I mean, this is the beginning of this problem. Because we've only broken it down. We've only broken out one piece. How many possible more pieces are there to break out? Four, right? Possibly. One thing to notice. I like the fact, look at what we saw, see at the end there. We see at the end negative 20. Yeah. So now that actually exactly matches our possible, right? Those are the factors of, except for 10 and 20. That pretty much still matches up. So it's really nice when we factor something and we get a much smaller number there, and that would cut our list down. But oh, well, we're still right at the same place. But don't think that, because two work, I can't cut it off, because maybe two will go in again. Maybe it's a repeated root. You can only cut something off if it doesn't work. So how could you continue now? What would Descartes say about what's left? 
How many times do you see it change? One time. What does that mean? There is one positive real zero left, right? Can there be any less than that? No. Because I got a, I only saw one sign change. And you go down by two every time. Can I go down by two from one? No. Then I have negative one of something. That's a little weird. There has to be one more positive root. So now, that's where Descartes really kind of helps. When it comes out to one, something more definitive. When it's zero or one, it's like, okay, that helps me out a little bit. Because now I can kind of focus on trying maybe another positive one. Because I know it definitely has another positive root. You guys, you guys kind of follow? I mean, these things kind of all come together as you're doing the problem. Yeah? So if you were doing another positive one and it worked, you don't have to do any more positive I love, There's the other thing. That's the other beautiful thing. The minute you find the positive one that works, none of the other positive ones can work because there can only be one more positive real root. Sweet. All right. I got, I, I got a few more people to buy in. Right. So what do you want to try now? Five? <laughs> Don't worry. As soon as we get this thing factored, we'll take a break. For sure. For sure. So if we try five, what, what do I put here now? One, three, exactly. Do not put all this crap up again. That was so desperately suck. You've already broken him down there. Now you work on the dude that still needs to be broken down. All right, so let's see. Mm, mm. Oh, what's that, John? 85? That's all right. Yes. Four. Hey, look at that. Kick ass. Good choice. So what does my list really look like now? And actually, I, I'm asking you a little too early. I know I can kill... Um, all the positive stuff, right? Well, let's see, real quick, what can I write, what do I have so far? I've got x minus two, x minus right? Times x minus five, times x cubed, good, because I was at four, now I'm at three. And this kind of confirms, do you see any changes in sign here? Therefore, there could be zero, and we already knew that. There could only have been one more positive real root. This confirms there's no more positive real roots. <laughs> no, there could still be negative real roots. Oh, shit. So what's my list look like now? What number am I looking at now to make my list? Four. And actually, I'm being a little smart about it. I'm not just going to put plus or minus. It's negative 1, negative 2, negative 4, and that's it, right? Because there can't be any more positive numbers. Can't be 5 anymore because 5 doesn't go into 4. Can't be negative 5 anymore because negative 5 doesn't go into 4. You guys kind of see how this goes together? So you can imagine, people often when they do this, they always go back to this when they make their next synthetic division. That sucks. Always go to what you know, the best thing you know, which is what you've broken down so far, what you've broken down so far. So now I've got a very small list to try from to finish this out. So if you do negative 2, 1, negative 2, 6, negative 12, Five then okay, does it? No. Shit, so it's not negative two. Yeah, negative four. One, negative four, four, negative sixteen, one, negative four, yeah. So what do we got so far then? We got x minus two, x minus five, x plus four. Can you factor this? Yeah. No, yeah. Neat. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Why yes. Um, now, the last step is to use quadratic formula correctly to factor this. You can't use quadratic formula to factor this. Of course you can. If I got, if I did quadratic formula, I got x equals seven and x equals negative three. Where did that have to come from? X minus seven and x plus three. So let me take that to the next level. Are you guys cool with that? Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. So if I got x equal uh, i plus three and x equal negative i plus three, oh boy, what's i? Screw negative one. It's complex number. Then how do I fact? Where did that come from? X minus, x minus i plus three. X minus negative i plus three. I mean, it's not a big deal. Then you distribute x minus i minus three. X plus i minus. Three. But I, same thing you did here. X is seven. X is negative three. X minus one. X minus the other one. And what's minus negative three? Plus three. So whatever the hell you got. I don't care if it's complex. I don't care what the hell it is. X minus one of them, X minus the other one, and you clean it up again. So what you would do here, if you do quadratic formula on this bad boy, negative B plus or minus B squared minus 4AC all over 2. Is that cool? Oops, B squared minus 4AC. Oh, I'll get it eventually. Negative 4 plus or minus screw root of 12, 12 over 2. Negative 2, give or take. Um, two. This will be 2 root 3, so it'll be root 3. Right, I did that a little quick because I know we can do quadratic formula. The important thing is how the hell do you write this in terms of factors? You guys go that root 12 is root 4, 3 is 2 root 3, divided by 2 is root 3. Simplifying that radical. So how do I write the factors? Plus root 3, x minus negative 2, minus root 3. Just put x minus, x minus each one. And then you simplify it a little bit. This will be x plus 2 minus root 3. To be x plus 2 plus root 3. And then times the other stuff that we got. And that's the complete factorization. Bullshit. Yeah, dude. Because I'm, I'm going in this assuming you guys know how to factor that. You can factor this, right? Of course you can. If it was a 9, it would be easy, right? 3 and 3. Where'd 3 come from? Isn't that square root of 9? All right, so what's the square root of 7? Just freaking square root of 7. <laughs> right? So don't make a big deal out of that. Doesn't that work out? You got radicals, don't they, don't they die? That's what different squares are all about, killing the middle terms. Radicals are gone. Radical 7, radical 7 is 7. Bam. So you can factor any difference of squares. Even if that is not a square, it sort of is. It's a square of a, rash of a radical. It still works. All right, it's break time now. Uh, come back, what, 220? <laughs>